Hello everyone and welcome to a rest day from the World Chess Championship match. Uh, we have no games today uh, between Yanni Pomnishi and Ding Liren, so I decided uh, uh, to sort of make a mini saga. Uh, two Bobby Fischer games, as we already had the big Bobby Fischer saga. If some of you haven't seen it, do check it out on my channel. Uh, I'll even put a link to it in the description below. It's uh, really uh, one of the nicest things you can see uh, online. And uh, this game uh, is really weird. Uh, Bobby Fischer basically gets destroyed in some 18 moves and when I say destroyed I, I, I'm not over exaggerating or anything here uh, he's facing former world champion Max Irvin, uh, who is okay at the time this game was played he was already some 56 years old uh, and Fisher was 14 years old uh, in this game even though there are a lot of titles you will find online that say okay 13 year old Bobby Fisher uh, you know played this game uh, and uh, uh, you know they aren't wrong by a lot but they are wrong because this uh, game <laughs> was played on March 9 uh, which is in fact Bobby Fischer's birthday uh, so that's why he was 14 already uh, during this game so here he faces uh, former world champion Max Uwe in a two game match um, uh, this is the first game on the, of the match and you guys will really love that one uh, but the second game I am uh, including in this saga will not be the second game of this match it will actually be a game two of them will play three years after this game uh, in the Leipzig uh, chess Olympiad but we're gonna uh, we're gonna get to that so here uh, Uwe has the white pieces and he he opens with pawn to d4 and Bobby replies with knight to f6 as he uh, usually did. We have c4, e6, knight to c3 and now pawn to d5. Fisher goes for the queen's gambit declined. Uh, we have c captures, e captures and now bishop to g5. So very solid opening. This is the standard um, uh, bishop to g5 line and now bishop to g4, bishop to b4. Bishop to e7 is uh, by far the, the more common move nowadays but okay bishop to b4 also very much playable. Pawn to e3 and now h6 challenging the, the bishop here uh, and while nowadays you'd probably probably see a nice queen captures on f6, uh, let's say queen captures and then queen to b3. Here we have bishop back to h4, also very much uh, playable and now pawn to c5, Fischer goes for a very principal decision going after Uwe's strong center here. Uh, we have bishop to d3 and now knight to c6, just continuing development and Fischer plays knight to e2. And this is a position that you would... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, very easily see even in modern chess for example it was uh, uh, reached in the World Blitz Championship of 2015 between Krishnan Sasikiran and uh, Aryan Tari uh, where Tari continued with c4 and uh, he lost that game but here Fisher plays c captures on d4 which is in fact the top move recommended by the engine uh, we have e captures on d4 and now we have castles by both players so castles castles and bishop to e6 by Fisher. we have bishop to c2 bishop to c2 is a move you don't expect from a former world champion it, it's uh, uh, it's a move you might uh, expect in a bullet game because the idea is basically queen to d3 uh, going after checkmate on h7 of course once we eliminated this knight but it is again the strongest move recommended by the engine okay you could maybe prepare it maybe some h3 rook to c1 then bishop to c2 but bishop to c2 definitely a, a great move with bishop back to e7 by fisher and now knight to f4 there are some games that uh, reach this position but after knight to f4 it is now as of move 13 that this position has never been reached again uh, and fisher goes queen to b6 and this is sort of where things start to get um, uh, re really scary for fisher queen to d7 was a lot safer choice because now after queen to b6 uh, everything is forced uh, and look at this bishop captures on f6 by max uh, bishop captures on f6 and now queen to d3 checkmate is being threatened and now fisher doesn't play g6 as one might expect he plays rook f to d8 he invites queen to h7 check uh, but if it goes for this let's say queen ca queen goes to h7 check king to f8 he still needs a move because king can come to e7 later uh, but okay you can prepare rook a to e1 and now you threaten to <coughs> Uh, eliminate this bishop on e6 but instead uh, Max starts with rook a to e1 he says I have time for, uh, for queen to h7 and if you play g6 that's not going to be very good for you because indeed uh, if Fisher goes pawn to g6 here then you can trade knight captures on e6 and you're just down a piece you can't capture back if you capture back then queen captures on g6 bishop g7 queen captures on e6 with check and you're just getting destroyed here there's no no coming back from this uh, so instead after this um, uh, uh, rook a to e1 move fisher just played knight to b4 he attacks the queen here and the bishop on c2 and now the question is how do you continue uh, from here uh, obviously queen to h7 check is a must so this is exactly what max plays 
queen to h7 check, king to f8, and now he plays a move that uh, one would not expect. He plays just pawn to a3. He says, take the bishop on c2. Uh, I, I don't mind. But he doesn't really care if Fisher takes the bishop because the point of a3 is simply... Well, I, I don't want to tell you the point because I might ruin the post of the video moment. But here Fisher captures the bishop. It doesn't matter what Fisher plays here, it's game over. So Fisher captures the bishop on c2 and now feel free to pause the video and win the game for uh, Max uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this absolute brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight c captures on d5. This is what Max played and uh, Fisher could have easily resigned here because now if uh, the bishop moves, obviously this is checkmated. The rook now controls the e-file. So Fisher captured with the rook instead, but here uh, just played knight captures on d5 and he was now in this position on move 20 uh, that Bobby Fisher resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So. Uh, of course, the e7 square is now covered. There's no defense against uh, queen to h8 checkmate. If you capture, then the rook covers the two squares. Then again, it's checkmate. And if you don't capture, uh, your queen is hanging. So, okay, you could stop checkmate with a move like g6. The bishop covers h8. But now just knight capture some b6. You're down a queen. And there's no playing this. You can, you have some compensation, but it's not nearly enough. Let's say captures. Now even rook captures on e6 is happening. And after f captures, captures on g6, attacks the bishop, attacks the knight. So there's there's no playing this. Bishop captures on d4, queen captures. You basically have uh, you have nothing here. Like You, you have nothing. Uh, so yeah, after knight captures on d5, on move 20, Bobby Fischer resigned. And uh, uh, Max Uwe took the lead in their match. Uh, and the second game ended by uh, Bo Bobby drawing the game. And uh, Max said in his book that uh, he, he remembers this encounter very well, and uh, as Bobby was already a very well-known player, uh, don't be fooled by uh, me saying that Bobby was only 14 years old here. Uh, he was an absolute beast at, at the age of 14, and uh, if you remember already at the, the age of 13, he played his immortal game uh, against Mr. Byrne, the, the game of the century. And uh, after that game, I mean, even prior to that game, people knew who Bobby Fischer was. But after the game, every person in the world, of course, knew who Bobby Fischer was. So here he was already 14, quite an, quite a strong player. Uh, but OK, you could argue that even though Mr. Byrne was a, was a very strong player, he was no former world champion like Max Uwe, who, uh, I mean, contested Alexander Aljechen for the title. He he, he defeated Alexander Aljechen in classical chess uh, 20 times. I mean, that's um, uh, I mean, that, that that's uh, uh, very impressive. So that's who who 14-year-old uh, Fisher was facing here. But still, an absolute crushing defeat for Bobby, and he was not happy with this. But like I said, this is a, a two-video mini saga. Uh, Bobby will have a chance for a rematch three years after this game was played in Leipzig in the uh, Chess Olympiad. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see if Bobby got his revenge or did Max, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, continued his lead or even maybe improved it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I even have a photo of this encounter let me just uh, <clears throat> uh load it up there you have it uh, sorry it's a bit small uh but yeah this is uh basically the photo of the encounter there you can see fisher playing uve uh with some uh people you know watching watching the games and uh this is the game that we've just seen as you can see Uwe has the white pieces or maybe it's not maybe it's just a game that they were analyzing and then someone took a photo yeah it's it's hard to say uh, it's not like they they took 50 photos they probably took this one <laughs> and that's it uh, but yeah, uh, Fisher wearing his uh, famous colorful sweater there, and uh, as one would expect, uh, you know, wearing a suit, much like everyone else here. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's it for this one. Uh, crushing defeat for Bobby Fisher. Uh, quite a nice uh, miniature for you guys to uh, enjoy and share with your friends at the bar in the library. Uh, if you uh, often play something like this, it's not a line that. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's impossible for happen. I mean, these are all very, very standard moves. Uh, this is a pretty standard attack. And already here, it's very hard for Fisher to play. I mean, but uh, after a queen to b6, it's just uh, dead lost here. I mean, absolutely, absolutely crushing. Uh, so yeah, once uh, once again, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Um, uh, I would like to thank uh, Kim Tori Jensen, Ole Anders Danielson, uh, GM Thomas Rusman, uh, Michael Kennedy, and Vladislav Satenko for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon with part two of this mini saga. It will be Fisher with the white pieces against uh, uh, former world champion Max Uwe in the Leipzig Olympiad of 1960. Uh, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.